Good evening, everybody. I uh, just wanted to show you uh, once again this train registry here before I get into the tutorial of Barstow Yard. What you're seeing there is uh, yellow is representative of any uh, local or switching operations. Green is that representative of the last recorded entry I have. Red is some type of uh, hot box and gray is uh, now outdated. I edit this about once every night and then that's where I update the latest green ones. But right below this, and this is in the train section on the website, is the Barstow Yard Matrix. Green is uh, trains that have been done. Red has not. Now I know the colors are hard for some people and some people's eyes. Uh, it's been mentioned. Uh, what you'll see here, a little trick, you just highlight this over and click the mouse button down and uh, then you can see. And this is how you find out uh, what uh, is either needed or not. The numbers aren't so important. They're more for me for uh, logistics purposes. But going back onto the home page here, you go into reports and when you when you looked at that chart and found the train uh, that was available, there was one uh, train uh, that was available, and that was M Watt Bar. It says under construction. That's wrong. Uh, but this is the switch list. It's pretty much straightforward. Uh, all you have to do is read it, and it tells you what tracks uh, particular uh, cars go into. It's in the order of, of the train and how it has to be broken down. So you can take that and you can right mouse click after you've highlighted it all and click print. Uh, that creates a nice uh, report uh, for your printer and uh, you're all set and then goes to your printer. I, I got the copy uh, for my switching and uh, I'll refer back to that uh, probably later on in uh, this video. Okay, so we're going to go up in the tower here at uh, Bar. So this is the receiving yard. You can see that Southern Pacific engine in the middle. That is our train that we're going to be taking apart. Uh, that's part of the system. Uh, if you look over there, there's some ready tracks over in the middle. Uh, they're, I believe they're car shops, uh, but um, I've been using them for east, east uh, end ready tracks, basically engines that are ready for uh, storage that are ready. Those two switchers right there are our switchers that we're going to be using for switching today. Now, before we start that, we have to get those two engines off our train, and we got to get one engine over there as to the switch list. That's um, the uh, the west end of uh, the ready tracks, most of the main storage. The shops are in the middle there, and then the fuel track is in the very background. Uh, so we'll have to be moving uh, those engines into that area uh, before we can get the switching. Uh. So that being said, we'll. Uh, Cut the power off and taking it out of uh, track five there is the receiving yeah, with a nice SP unit on the second. That'll go back uh, uh, West Colton, I guess. Uh, West Colton takes a lot of light power. So, anyways, uh, you'll see a little bit of distortion, like little ghost uh, in the graphics. That's uh, not the train simulator, that's my rendering. Uh, just a disclaimer. And uh, so we're switching back. We're going down track 11 here. Uh, this track is never used for uh, incoming trains uh, for this very reason because it has to access all these uh, in and out tracks for the various yards. Uh, but we're going to be heading through uh, different places. This is just an added routine that I put in just to, instead of just throwing power anywhere. Probably have too much power, but uh, the first uh, setup here is the shops. We'll switch in there, go through there. Uh, here, uh, just uh, we're going to put in uh, an entry into the registry because uh, usually you do this right away. It's, it's simple. You just hit B and then get Barstow Yard, and it remembers all the old old ones. So uh, see all the ones I've breaking down before. So this one we are breaking down uh, is the uh, Watt Bar, and uh, you just submit that. That goes into the system like you seen earlier. And uh, so as you can see, we're heading slowly down and yeah, skip ahead here. The SP unit I'm heading, uh, that's like I said, that's going to West Colton. So that's not going into the shops, even though it's there's like one track that goes through the shops. That's just to get around. Just cut the uh, the engines off here. If you're lucky, you get two, two or three engines that just go right to uh, the ready track. So I cut the SP unit off. Uh, this is the power unit that I was using. And I take that in and uh, park it in one of the shop tracks. Yeah, it's got a number nine on the end. That's the system I'm using. If it's a nine, a three, or uh, 
uh, shoot, uh, seven uh, for this month. I've been uh, putting it away. Uh, more on that on the forum. Anyways, I take control of the SP unit now. Babbling on. And I got a cold too, so I probably don't sound that great. But uh, I get the SP unit out, out past the shop track over by the fuel track there. And in the distance, you can see uh, the the ready track on the west side. Uh, it's right by the office where the uh, the road uh, goes underneath the main line there. Uh, those are all the uh, the engines used uh, for the west end, and there's the other ones for the east end. And uh, so now I'm just backing in uh, the SP to whatever available room there is, which isn't much. I probably have too much power in here, but. Uh, I'll eventually get some light power out of here. But uh, yeah, just take this SP unit. Uh, and uh, once we get that uh, put away, I have to shove back a few things here because uh, they're all sticking out, but there's some room I already checked. So I just shoved it back a little bit and uh, got it out of the way. And uh, then we can get our switcher uh, fired up and away we go. So now the fun begins. Uh, we put that back to normal, but to get back into five and go through the startup routine here. And uh, I did quite a bit of video. I actually recorded this whole thing. Of course, you see the distortion inside uh, the cab. That's not there. And uh, so I start backing up. Uh, it's a nice straight backup uh, being on track five, so that's kind of cool. Uh, you see ahead uh, where you're basically uh, sitting. Uh, uh, right by the office here. it's just on the left hand side but uh, that track right there to the right is is actually uh, the track that we're going to be heading down uh, to get into the uh, the old yard but we're just backing up and there's a cross over there um, there's the office I was talking about that's basically where I park it um, but go down there and uh, just took up to track five reverse our switches and this, uh, by the way, is uh, going to be where the virtual hump is as well that I keep talking about. Uh, so a lot of this is going to change. Uh, it won't be necessary to go through uh, uh, the R procedure, procedures that we're going to go through. Not this part. This part you're going to always have to do. But the actual uh, dealing with the flat yard uh, is going to change uh, quite a bit uh, once we get the virtual hump going because then you won't have to sort it in the old yard. So yeah, I just took up to my cars there, and uh, away we go over to the old yard, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so long story short, um, this program uh, <clears throat> that I'm using for the rendering, the easy bit, which is really good, as we're looking as this train's uh, leaving. Uh, first, I have to do the switching there at Boron on track 10. But uh, it only allows me uh, to record 45 minutes, even though it records much more. So, it only fits 45 minutes of the timeline. Didn't tell me that by the time I got through. What's important is where you're heading after you do the switching here at Boron. You're heading over to um, the, um, the old yard, or the east yard, or whatever you want to call it. I call it the old yard, the east yard, whatever. But uh, you can see the Boron stuff on the back there going into 10. The, the point is... What you have to do is you're basically managing what is a busy track and you use that matrix to kind of see what's coming up. It's under construction right now and it's going to be more obsolete once the hump gets into place. But uh, what ended up happening was uh, the stuff for TPL, you'll see in the switch list later if you if you want, uh, you'll see this coming up in a, in a few minutes here, we'll, we'll get to it. but. Uh, I wanted to mention that because uh, that stuff ended up going into 12 and everything that came out of 12 went into a departure track. So I just wanted to throw that in there uh, while I had a chance. Okay, that being uh, said, here is the switch list. And you'll notice on the notes um, there will be some stuff I'll highlight. But anyway, it says under construction. That's wrong. Um, it was under construction. I just didn't uh, remove it. And it automatically saves it as soon as I do it. Uh, but it shows the date. Uh, that always shows at the top. I'm highlighting there the uh, receiving 10. We've already done that, uh, so you would just check that off on your list. Um, I, the notes are important, but a lot of times what will happen is in the process of switching, you will end up problem solving or find a solution. 
And the solution that I found as I was switching this, not so much the yard power, obviously, is, is the next paragraph about TPL. Uh, what happened was those tracks get occupied real quick and TPL didn't have an assigned track. However, track 12 uh, was getting very full, which, uh, which is LUB. So I took everything from LUB at the end of uh, the trip and normally that's what you do is you bring it over to the departure yard and it's as simple as that. Okay, what I forgot to mention was Boron was track 10 in the receiving. We've already done that. If you had Victorville's, they'd be track 9 in the receiving. What you're seeing there on the left-hand side is actually, or right in the middle there, is actually uh, Cadiz. That's one of the pockets. You can see the pockets because they're little crossover tracks. Here's the line coming in uh, as we're heading towards the, uh, the old yard. The next pocket is actually the lead for Bakersfield, which is a set off in Mojave. And then when you go back past that, the next pocket is actually uh, the, uh, the Bakersfield uh, train. So I'll get into the last few minutes uh, of this video here, and oh, boy, did I miss a lot. Anyways, uh, train here is coming down track four. Um, what I'd recommend you do is take a look at the M watt bar switch list. Um, and this is, it's one of these techniques that you learn with, the more switching you do, the more you figure out how to do puzzles. This yard has, is not like your typical yard and this yard isn't going to be switched too much in the distant future. Probably mid fall, it's going to be uh, less and less important because of the hump. But anyways, you can see we're going down four, track one, two, and three. I uh, just switched there, but track one, two, and three in this uh, uh, later version here, you can see three is uh, empty. The reason why three is empty is because the last train that switched there actually took everything and brought it back to the departure yard. Now today it's going to be track 12, as I mentioned. And if you look at the switch list, um, track 12 actually ended up starting to overfill. And what I ended up doing was I took the three uh, tank cars that go to TPL, put that over there, and you find a lot of times that you're in the field and you have to you have to do something on the fly. What I'm doing here, because track three is open, normally I would do a run around in track four. I'd go to one of the other tracks, I believe six or seven. I'm not too sure which one I come back down, but four is always the one I go down because this allows me to switch in multiple ways. I can switch from the east end into one, two, or three. I can switch from the center, or I can go do a run around and switch from the opposite end. And what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna end up breaking apart uh, these cars here. As you can see, I'm, I'm already setting up um, for, for this train. And the reason why was because there's seven uh, tank cars that I'm bringing into three. So I decided, well, I might as well do it down here. Normally I don't switch down there and you end up, uh, you're kind of, I don't know if you're out of the yard limit or whatever, but you're not in the CTC, so it's not a big deal. But the bottom line is, um, as I show you some of these videos, because I really can't say too much more, uh, if you have questions, if there's something not clear that this video hasn't showed, just ask. The most important thing is follow the switch list. If there's anything that's in dispute, just make a note into the registry. And when you make a note into the registry, I see that um, if you make mistakes, you make mistakes. It's no big deal. I made mistakes uh, a couple times while I was switching today. And there's a lot of times that you know something will change uh, when you're going through. The other side has its own little ladder as well, you'll find. So it's in a very interesting yard, to say the least, but uh, as you see here, I'm just going to uh, close out this video here because I missed so much, uh, unfortunately, that uh, didn't get set for this video, and it probably would have took more than three videos to get it all done, so with like 30 seconds left. So you got to be um, creative, um, use the switch list, use it to your advantage. There's no right way. There's many ways to switch a yard, so it's not a big deal. I would just say uh, get out there, try it, and uh, if you have any more questions, leave a comment or uh, uh, let me know. And uh, that's all for now, and uh, take it easy. Have a good one.